Law as Public Service and Access to Justice. This unit will deal with lawyers' special responsibilities as public citizens and the current situation regarding the public's access to justice. Before discussing this challenging topic of access to justice in the second part, we will review in this first part the rules of professional conduct that address these needs. Rules 6.1 through 6.5 deal with public service. Rule 6.1, voluntary pro bono public service. This rule says that every attorney has a professional responsibility to provide legal services to those unable to pay. Quote, a lawyer should aspire to render at least 50 hours of pro bono publico legal service every year. Close quote. Note that this is an aspirational rule. Attorneys are not disciplined for failure to provide pro bono services. A few state bars require attorneys to report on their pro bono work, but this itself has been very controversial. Comment 1 notes that the 50 hours per year is a goal over one's legal career, and some years the lawyer may provide more, and some years fewer hours of pro bono service. Comment 1 notes, however, that personal involvement with the problems of the disadvantaged can be one of the most rewarding experiences in a lawyer's life. What counts as pro bono? Rule 6.1A1 says that the lawyer should provide a substantial majority of the 50 hours to persons of limited means or to organizations that primarily address the needs of persons of limited means. Rule 6.1B goes on to recommend that the attorney provide any additional services through organizations seeking to protect civil rights, civil liberties, or public rights, or to religious, community, governmental, or educational organizations that would be unable to pay standard legal fees, or to provide legal services at a substantially reduced fee to persons of limited means, or to participate in activities to improve the law, legal system, or profession. The rule further notes that, quote, in addition, a lawyer should voluntarily contribute financial support to organizations that provide legal services to persons of limited means. Thus, one should note that the rules privilege pro bono for the needy above pro bono for a cause or to reform the law. However, the legal services for the needy may encompass the full range of activities, as comment two highlights, including individual and class representation, lobbying, administrative rulemaking, and training and mentoring of those who represent persons of limited means. What is the rationale for this focus on serving the needy? Here we should return to the discussion of the adversary system and the concept that it is a fair way to resolve disputes provided both parties are well represented. Law professor Richard Abel argues that legal services are different in kind than other social services. This is because they usually are needed due to a dispute, due to an adversary. The integrity of the U.S. legal system, an adversary system, depends upon equal representation of all people. Philosopher David Lubon agrees, law practice is not a victimless pastime. Represented parties can unfairly harm those without counsel. If a lawyer is not part of the solution, she is part of the problem in that unique way. We will return to the need for greater access to justice and approaches that lawyers may wish to consider after we review the rest of the rules. Rule 6.2, accepting appointments. This rule provides that a lawyer must not seek to avoid appointment by a tribunal to represent a person except for good cause. The good causes listed include if representation is likely to result in a violation of the rules. This refers to the attorney not being competent to handle the case or having a conflict of interest that would prevent accepting the case. Other good cause to reject the case includes that the representation is likely to result in an unreasonable financial burden or the client or cause is so repugnant as to likely impair the lawyer-client relationship or the attorney's ability to represent the client. When is this rule relevant? Do courts randomly appoint attorneys to represent people in court? Since the U.S. Supreme Court established that a criminal defendant facing possible incarceration was constitutionally entitled to an attorney, states have handled assigning those attorneys in various ways. States and counties spend a little under $3 billion annually for criminal defense services, which amounts to 3% of the amount spent for police, judicial, and corrections. Some communities fund a legal defender's office staffed by salaried attorneys. This is generally thought to be the approach most likely to result in competent representation. 
Other communities contract with individual lawyers who are paid a fixed, typically very low, amount per case or low hourly rates for in-court and out-of-court time. Some communities appoint lawyers to represent criminal defendants pro bono, but relying upon a previously established list of volunteers. Professors Lerman and Schrag in their text state that they know of no community that randomly assigns lawyers to handle criminal cases. One is more likely to be appointed to represent an incarcerated habeas corpus petitioner who has filed a pro se petition. A judge may think that there may be some merit in the petition and ask an attorney to assist the petitioner. 28 U.S.C. 1915 permits federal judges to request an attorney to represent an impoverished person who is unable to afford an attorney. So Rule 6.2 might become relevant in this situation or if one is on the list of attorneys accepting contract or pro bono appointments to handle criminal defense matters. There are very few areas of civil law in which a poor person is entitled to be represented. These may include a person facing involuntary commitment to a mental hospital or a proposed ward in a guardianship petition or a parent facing parental termination. In these cases, courts rarely appoint counsel, relying either upon pro bono volunteers or upon state-funded offices that provide the required representation. Rule 6.3, Membership in Legal Services Organizations. This rule permits an attorney to serve on the board of directors of a nonprofit legal services program, despite the fact that the attorney may represent clients against clients of the legal services program. When an attorney is a board member, she does not have an attorney-client relationship with the clients of the program. Indeed, the board member would typically not be entitled to confidential information about the program's clients. In light of the board member's possible conflict of interest, the rule provides that the attorney board member must not participate in certain decisions. She may not participate in a board decision if doing so would be incompatible with her obligations to a client under Rule 1.7, or if the decision would have a material adverse effect on the representation of a program client whose interests are adverse to those of a client of the attorney board member. Imagine this scenario. Imagine that the program's board of directors must approve any appeal, and the program attorneys wish to appeal a case to enhance the rights of tenants. Well, if an attorney board member represents landlords or real estate development companies, the law change the program is seeking might harm these clients' interests. If that is the case, the attorney board member simply does not vote on whether to approve the appeal. As the comments note, attorneys are encouraged to support and participate in legal service organizations. This is the accommodation to make that possible. Rule 6.4, Law Reform Activities Affecting Clients' Interests. This rule deals with law reform organizations that also have boards of directors. As with Rule 6.3, an attorney may be a member of the board of directors even though the law reform organization may affect the interests of a client of the attorney. When the attorney board member knows that the interests of his client might be materially benefited by a decision before the board, the attorney must disclose this fact, but need not identify the client. For example, say an attorney is on the board of the ACLU and represents a media outlet. A decision by the ACLU to bring a case for greater access to government records could benefit the attorney's media clients, so the attorney should disclose this. The comments to 6.4 also point out that an attorney working with a law reform organization must be mindful of conflicts of interest under 1.7. Rule 6.5, Nonprofit and Court Annex Limited Legal Service Programs. Increasingly low and moderate income clients are turning to brief health clinics for assistance with their legal problems. This rule makes it easier for attorneys to volunteer to provide brief advice in such clinics without complicated conflicts checks. Rule 6.5a provides that when an attorney is volunteering with a nonprofit or a court-sponsored program to give short-term limited legal services, the lawyer has a personal conflict of interest under 1.7, current client, or 1.9, former client, only if the attorney knows that the representation of the client involves a conflict. Likewise, the attorney volunteer is conflicted out under Rule 1.10 due to imputations within his firm only if he knows that another lawyer in his firm is disqualified. For example, the director of the Legal Aid Society, who sees his firm has drafted the complaint for the opposing party, cannot personally advise the client who comes to the clinic for help with an answer. 
However, a given attorney who doesn't know that an opposing party is represented by his firm is permitted to advise the clinic client. Comment 2 points out that such limited scope legal services must be consented to by the client under Rule 1.2 and must be reasonable under the circumstances. Moreover, the attorney is bound by all other rules of professional conduct, including confidentiality, just not the conflicts of interest rules as outlined here. Comment 4 notes that the limited nature of the services reduces the risk of conflicts of interest. If the attorney volunteer's firm is representing an opposing party, the attorney's participation in the short-term clinic will not conflict out his firm.